Winning matters, your feelings don't. Today's question is, I often overanalyze, overthink things after I play a bad game or have a bad training session, and that can lead then to a bit of negative emotion and a poor experience for me. What do? So we're going to get into this, and by the end of it, hopefully we're going to have a way of making the most out of this overanalyzing and understanding that it's not a bad thing, and then on top of that, how to combat this to enhance your training and rate of progress, because that's what it's all about, getting better and getting better faster in the competition. So let's start off with a bit of understanding of skill acquisition. Skill acquisition is the science of the field of understanding how skill, competence is acquired and what affects the rate of that development. Really interesting field of research, but one of the things that stands out to me is like from the sport of Olympic weightlifting, if you're doing a skill, for example, and the last rep of your training session is a bad one and you miss it, then you end up um, coming away from that and going, oh, that was a good session. You think about it and you analyze it. But the research shows if you get all of your uh, lifts and the last lift that you get, then you end up going away going, that was a good training session, I feel good about it, and you go on to the next training session. The difference being is the person who thinks about it over their head, goes through the technique, what went wrong, and is annoyed about it a bit, actually progresses faster because they're thinking about it when they're away from the gym, which is really interesting. So if you have a bad training session in any sport, thinking about it when you're away from the training session results in or can result in your improvement. However, overthinking, overanalyzing, being upset and disturbed by it, not so good. We want to avoid that. So it's kind of like Goldilocks. Not too much, not too little, just right. So how do we make the just right approach to analyzing training? Very simply, a good way to do this is to keep a training diary, keep a log of things, and have a process of analyzing things. This is what I do to stop people from, or help them stop, from them having absolute thoughts or black and white thinking or all or nothing thinking are the terms we use to describe this was oh, my session was all bad or my session was all good okay because that type of evaluation of a session isn't true and isn't helpful and isn't logical so here's what we do we take this uh, now you might notice something absolutely marvelous this is a three angle I had to invent it because normally in psychology, what occurs is people do these things called Likert scales, which is from A to B. And when we go, oh, this was good, and this was bad, and I'm uh, you know, 10 on the, on the good scale, and, and that's, that's me good over there, brilliant, wonderful. There's no real thinking or evaluation in that. So what we need to do is we need to use a three angle. Now, in this three angle, I might mark on three positive qualities that are important to me in my training. So we're gonna go with effort, and then we're gonna go with uh, responsibility. Ah, oh, my right's bad. Uh, and then we're gonna go with communication. Whatever, I'm dyslexia. I'm not gonna spell on camera, it's all right. So you've got effort, responsibility, and communication. And then you would say, right, where am I on those scales? Uh, if those are three words that are important to me and my training and my interaction with teammates. And you would go, oh, right, I put in a lot of effort and I communicated well, so I'm probably up there on that. Now, another training session, you might use the same words again for the next training session, or you might uh, use different words that are more appropriate if that training session is a, a different focus for you. You might say, well, I took more responsibility in this session. I didn't complain a bunch about other players, etc. I took more responsibility, uh, but it didn't communicate that, you know, well done to other players, that type of thing. And my effort wasn't high enough, so you might be down here. And you can see what this does is this allows us to have a more evaluative understanding uh, and allows us to get a better story, a better quality understanding of the training session. Now, when we've done that, we would then maybe write a few words about it, a few lines about it, and we could also use some prompts don't care what prompts you use but here's some that i like what went well by three when we write down the things that went well what that does is that builds our confidence Ooh, we like that don't we okay so that is a good one include this one what went well builds our confidence it focuses on what we've achieved now 
the next one is a bit of reflection. What were the challenges and what were the learnings? Can I write down something about that? All right, what were the things that challenged me today and what did I learn? And then, and lastly, is like, what next? So what next is, what am I going to do in the next training session? Right. The big stupid thing to do is, on the next training session, I'm going to do all effort, all communication and all responsibility. Nah, it doesn't work like that, okay? Adding something in can mean that something else is taken out. So it might be a case you go, do you know what? This was good enough. I'm going to continue that. So you want to think about what next along the three frameworks of what do I need? Could I start something new? Could I add something in? Could I stop doing something? Could I take something out? Or could I, should I continue what I'm doing? What am I doing that is beneficial uh, in in this endeavor that I face where I'm being challenged? So that's a good way to reflect what you could do next. That could be a simple one page job on a diary that you can fill out and this gives you a way of analyzing your training session. Now, let's go back into the deeper element of the emotions behind this. We know our emotions come from our beliefs and our belief is that when we do something bad, we might go, ah, I'm a bad person. I didn't get that ball. Or we might go, oh, I've let the team down. The team hit me. No. The team don't hate you because you missed a pass. They've got loads of other reasons to hate you. Not just because you're a bad footballer. That's called a joke. Please don't take that personally. Now, <laughs> the, the, the reason that we do this is not because when we miss a pass, we end up with this emotion of, I am ashamed, I am disappointed, I am saddened, I am anxious. We can have all these emotions, but these emotions come from the beliefs that we tell ourselves, and the belief might be, I should win every ball, I should perform everything perfectly, and then you'll be saying, and if I do not, I am a bad person. Or you might be saying, and if I do not, people will not like me and hate me. And as I've said, they've all got other reasons to like, or like you or hate you, and that's a key point. When we think about it in a spectrum, You've got 35 people in a squad, you've got 40 people in the club, you've got 7 billion people or whatever it is, the planet, they've all got a range of different opinions about you and most of them don't even know you exist. If you put all the people you care about on a spectrum, if you go and do something, whether it's order a cup of tea or order a double vodka and Red Bull, oh, shouldn't be mentioning adverts and giving them airtime. Anyway, uh, Right, if this is not sponsored by Red Bull, but if you want to send me cans, that's fine. Um, if you go and do either of those actions, the entire range of people that you know will judge you. And they'll have their own judgment and there'll be a bell curve of judgment as to what they think about it. So no matter what you do, there's always a range of opinions and you can't control other people's opinions. And as soon as you try and control other people's opinions or be controlled by them or say, oh, well, if they don't, uh, approve of me and I disappoint them I must change my behavior all you're doing is becoming a slave to other people's opinions you've given up your identity you've given up your individuality and that's really important because that what makes is what makes you a powerful human being and able to change and control yourself and think for yourself so anytime you think I'm letting myself down change that into it would be nice for people to be uh, approving of me but I don't need their approval to continue my endeavors trying to get better going back to that if you're on a team with somebody and you see somebody making a mistake you'll go oh Drew, why'd you do that what's you know flip sick you know again whatever it is you shout at them the point being is that what you should do is you should go hmm it might be more helpful if I say next ball next tackle it might be more helpful if I say I don't care what happens in this training or in this match. All I care about is what you do and what you want to get out of this sport because that's more important. I value you as an individual regardless of how you perform. Now, when it comes to the cutthroat of actual performance, yeah, sure, people get cut, people get selected or deselected. That's fine. That's part of sport. There are There's a process of trying to win things. That's why we're all here. But when we value people for who they are and not for their performance, because that's what a really strong team does, that's what a really strong community does, and that's what makes sport special. Similarly, if you have that sort of culture within a business or an organization, yeah, there's gonna be times when people get to the boundaries and there's gonna be hard lines, we might have to deselect people, 
but for the most part lean in with we value people regardless of the performance but at the same time everyone here is trying to perform and we're trying to get the best out of people so you can deselect somebody and not devalue them as a human being and that's a good attitude to have as a teammate as a manager as a coach as a business owner whatever okay just because somebody doesn't meet a standard doesn't change their worth as a human being now lastly what i would say to you is i think this and also going easy on yourself and saying right i'm here to make mistakes i need to find some good that i got out of the training session and understand that challenge is important will make a big difference now hopefully this is a value to you guys uh look after yourself and look after others